where bartending is a sport in bartending. So you're showcasing art. There's many misconceptions about flair. Some people haven't embraced that kind of idea, but for us, we, we need to be firm in showcasing that flair. Blow dried my beard earlier. Okay, we're good. My name is Shalom, currently an on-trade specialist in William Grant & Sons, Singapore. Hi everyone, my name is Brian Bonifacio. I'm from Employees Only Singapore. My name is Joma. I'm working in Cafe Utu. My name is Edu Zamora. I'm working in a Origin Bar as a head bartender. It was a warm, sunny afternoon. I was watching HBO and there's this movie called Cocktails by Tom Cruise. It's very handsome. <laughs> To most people, even to my mom. <laughs> I mean, the only thing that stuck in my mind was two gentlemen flaring in the bar, having fun, doing a great show. Yeah, he basically inspired me to start flare bartending. So this is a very funny reason for me when you're flaring. All of these, you know, beautiful ladies are looking at you. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> I'm more mature now, so for me, I see it as like I'm a built-in performer. And that time, right, when I was learning in Philippines, it's the peak of flare bartending. So when you know or you have this skill set, you're a priority. During those years, I don't have any talent. I think flair bartending starts something within myself that I personally wanted to do and try. So I saw my brother throwing bottles, flipping bottles uh, in our backyard. I said, grow older. I said, oh, there's actually a course called hotel and restaurant management. And part of it is a flair bartending. When I start to throw a bottle, I just automatically fall in love with it. There are two main classifications of flair bartending, exhibition flair and craft flair bartending. Exhibition flair is not realistic on a high volume bar. <laughs> I know every bartender want to hear this. Yeah, it's not realistic. It's an art form. You cannot translate it to something functional. Well, on the other hand, craft flair bartending. Still performing a little bit of tricks, but not really wasting time. If it's like really not busy and there's like only two tables, maybe three to five seconds there. When you're starting an exhibition flare, you just need two things. One is practice flare bottle, and the other one would be the tin can. There are tons of uh, classic, like, basic flare moves. One of them would be shadow pass, wherein you're throwing something behind your head and you catch it without looking at it. The other one would be backdrop. You're dropping any tools behind your back, then catching it from behind. Coordination between your eyes and hand and feet. So it's like dancing in general. A lot of discipline. You need consistency to maintain it. Every day is like learning. You know, it's just like you build up a muscle memory. You know, just adding more reps. It's just like how are you going to be more creative and how can you interact with the people, basically the judges and the crowd. Three, two, one. In a nutshell, I joined over 50 competitions. So I went to Tokyo in 2016. Uh, I won number one in Asia, top eight in the world. As a Filipino who represented Singapore twice in a world competition, I'm super proud of this. One of the biggest uh, competition I joined was a national competition in Philippines. I was one of the student flair bartender from Manila to represent. A couple of competitions which really significant on my bartending career is TGI Friday's competition, where I used to work. In Singapore, uh, I won twice the national National cocktail competition on the flair category. My style of flair bartending is all about fun. I always pick music that people can, you know, have a good vibe. I even go out of the stage to high five to the judges. I just own the five minutes of my life. So you watch me and let's have a good time. You need to have like the groove and style. So you have to choose the music that fits you. Also part of it is you have to mix cocktails. You have to manage your time properly because one second over time you just lose the competition. The first challenge for me personally is transitioning from practice bottle to real bottles. You fear like breaking the bottle or like breaking it while throwing it then everything like splash and go into your eyes, those kind of things. I have like my teeth, yeah, some bruises, yeah, even at the back, quite a lot. I had the shaker hit my lip, so I wasn't speaking or laughing or smiling <laughs> until my, my, my turn on stage. If you look at 
us outside the bar we're like spending hours of practice just to perfect one shaker toss just to make sure that the bottle that we throw up in our back will land it in our hands and not to the floor those training that we do is like crazy and people maybe misjudge it because people may, may see that we're just showing off but in reality that we spend time and time just to practice this one moment just to impress you A lot of people said, oh, player bartending just make their service slow, but totally not. It's just like how the bartenders do it. Working player is something that's fun to do behind the bar, but of course you have to know where you do it, how you do it, and when you do it. I've been doing flair for over 13 years. I still find it fun, even if it's not relevant to do at some point. It's a craft at the end of the day. I think from generation to generation, it improves. Flair bartending is my door to the world. I met those people I've been watching on YouTube, and you'll never know, you'll be competing with them, like, which is I'm on that position now. I accept it from the beginning that I'm not the best in difficulty, but showcasing myself in front of people are the best moments of being a flair bartender.